When alone in the dark, do you ever hear strange noises? See objects moving that shouldn't be there? Feel a cold chill that runs up your spine? The hair on your back of your neck stands up? Or have the feeling as though someone's watching? Those are things that the spooks, the supernatural paranormal organization of Kansas team, they search for the truth to determine if there's a scientific, rational explanation for the occurrence or if there's a reason to investigate. Tonight, Spooks is investigating the Meridazine Massacre site, just south of Lacey in Kansas. Uh, this is a pretty notorious uh, Civil War site that basically was one of the, the determining factors for starting the Civil War in the United States. When you hear people today speak about the Border War in Kansas or Missouri, most people assume that it stems from the rivalry between bordering schools the University of Kansas and the University of Missouri. What most people don't realize is that this phrase actually derives its significance from a very dark and bloody pre-Civil War rivalry between the two states. In 1854, Congress passed the Kansas-Nebraska Act, which allowed the residents of the territory of Kansas to decide whether or not they would be admitted to the Union as a free or a slave state. Due to this freedom of choice given to the residents, a violent and gruesome rivalry ensued called Bleeding Kansas. Things escalated to the point of no return in the spring of 1858, when Charles Hamilton, a well-known member of a vigilante group that was given the name Missouri Border Ruffians, and his men captured 11 Free State supporters, marching them into a ravine and opening fire upon them. The Missouri Border Ruffians were a collection of pro-slavery advocates that were willing to do anything in the name of keeping slavery alive and well, and Charles Hamilton was one of its biggest supporters. On May 18, 1859, Charles Hamilton led 25 men to the Meridazine River Valley, capturing and robbing a multitude of anti-slavery advocates. They released the old, young, and Freemason members from the group of kidnapped and marched the eleven that remained to a secluded ravine, lining them up and opening fire upon them. Among the captured men was Benjamin Reed, a local reverend. His wife Sarah Reed set off in pursuit of her husband and to render aid in the time of need to the unfortunate souls caught up in this tragic dispute. Out of the eleven men captured, five men died, five men were severely injured, and one escaped miraculously unharmed. It didn't take long for the word to spread about this horrific scene, and was ultimately dubbed by a distraught nation as the Meridazine Massacre. Of course, this did not set well with anti-slavery abolitionists in Kansas, leading one of the most well-known advocates of anti-slavery, John Brown, to the scene to erect a fort just 220 yards away from the horrendous site. This single act of violence and hatred was one of the final ignition points to what would eventually be called the U.S. Civil War. 
the fort was eventually relinquished to the control of Brown's friend, Charles H. Hadsell, under the condition that Brown could occupy it for his own military purposes. Hadsell later built a large stone house that adjoined the fort, which still stands to this day. The incident was so widely known and publicized that it led abolitionist and poet John Greenleaf Whittier to write a poem about the incident titled Les Merodouzines. Charles Hamilton was able to escape persecution and return to Georgia, where he lived until 1880, when he died. We've been out here several times before, and we're hoping to get some of the same activity that we've gotten before, which is uh, pretty intense. Uh, I know Nathan's had some experiences that have scared the piss out of him. Me, personally, I've been, I've been touched, uh, grabbed, had things thrown at me. Nathan's had things thrown at him. Um, we've had one of our members, Rick, physically taken over by something that we couldn't see behind the house. Um, got extremely, extremely belligerent, angry, sick to his stomach, threw up. The second he came back from around the, the back of the house to the front, everything was fine. So we're hoping to capture some pretty cool evidence. I know you, I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Absolutely. Let's get this thing underway. All right, so I'm sitting out here um, by myself at the Meredizine Mer Massacre site in front of the little house out here. And we haven't really had anything happen at all yet since we've been out here, except for, you know, some random noises, which is pretty typical. So, hopefully with me sitting here with the cameras, the K2 and the voice recorder, we can catch something. Probably would have been cooler if we would have filmed this from the back of the house, but uh, way too many webs getting down there, and I did not want to sit there and get freaked out by spiders, so... Here we are on the bench in the front. Is there anybody else here with me? If so, you don't need to be shy. The bench I'm sitting on is pretty long, so if you want to come up here and join me, I'd really appreciate that. I've got a little green light sitting over on the bench to my left. If you come up or come up around here, um, that light will flicker off several other lights, changing different colors. And that'll let me know that you are here with me. And there's also a voice recorder sitting next to me, so if you make any noises, I'll be able to hear it later on. Why are you stuck here? I keep seeing something out of the... Hello? Is there anyone there? I don't know if the voice recorder is picking this up. I hope it is. But I keep hearing a woman's voice. And I have no idea where it's coming from. So, something just. I think a little snake touched my ankle. Don't be afraid to show yourself to me. 
not here to hurt you. We might actually be able to see something tonight if anything happens because for the first time in a while coming out here, the sky is completely clear, so there's moonlight shining everywhere. Is there anyone out here with us that would like to say hi? I have no idea what that was, but I just heard female screaming. Hopefully the audio was able to pick that up. I'm not going to lie, it's very creepy out here. feels as if something's constantly watching you, peeking through trees, rustling, but that could be animals. Like that, I have no idea what that was. If there's anyone here with me, can you please make that swing? Move. I would really, 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 really like that. What is your name? Can you show yourself? I know what happened here was horrible and we're sorry for that. But we're just here to communicate with you. We're not here to harm you. Several claims of activity have been reported from the Meredizine massacre site over the years. People report hearing gunshots, screaming, women and men crying, as well as many visual sightings. Some of the most common claims of visual paranormal incidents are that of the swing moving on its own in the field between the old stone house and the massacre site, and that of seeing shadow people appearing and disappearing within the tree line. Were you one of the men that got killed during the massacre? Are you upset that we are here? Who's there? All right. 
I just got really uncomfortable. Something's making like a really weird noise by the swing. Like I got I got goosebumps on my hands. The hair on my hands is standing up. What the f was that? Who's out here? Show yourself. Between trading posts and here, slavery, pro slavery men captured some anti slavery men. They were ordered to march across the border. What happened once they marched across the border? It wasn't good. They were lined up in a ravine, which we're going to see here shortly. They were ordered to stand still. And then the pro slavery men opened fire. I'm going to show you where, uh, where their demise took place. There were 11 of them. Five of them shot and killed on the spot. The other five were wounded. And one played dead. And survived the entire ordeal. I can't imagine what he was going through. I can't. There's a lot of stuff going on right now. This is a ravine. Right down here. They were lined up and shot down. Is this where you died? Where you were murdered? Give me some sort of sign that you're still here. I wish I could walk back down in there, but it's overgrown now. The only way I can tell you're here is if you come up and touch this green light in my hand. Or if you speak into this little black box that I'm holding. Or physically make a sound that I can hear. Or touch me. I heard five men were murdered here. Were you one of them? Are you not part of the massacre? And you're here for some other reason? Like Native American, Bigfoot, Nathan, solo session of walking. It's here walking with my voice recorder and uh, K2. I'm not gonna lie, this is creepy. Creepy as hell. I, I can't. God damn. Excuse me. 
No light. Alright. Just gotta make it. Gotta make it down here. Somebody was talking to us down by the house. Talking to Nathan, Danny, and Larry. Somebody tugged on Nathan's shirt. Was that you? Or if that was you and you can hear me, come over here. I want to talk to you here. Hear a train off in the distance. Alright, if you're not going to give me any sort of sign whatsoever, I believe that you're not here. Now I'm going to head out. I don't know what's going on back here, man. There's creepy things are calling. Oops. Okay, two meters going off. See that? See that? Who's that? Is that you? Is that you? Why is the K2 meter going off? You let me know other than this. Just letting you know. So right in front of me is where the massacre happened. I have a little green light in my hand. Can you come up and touch it and make it turn red like you were down there? Or like somebody was down there? A lot of insect sounds out here. Is somebody here besides myself? Can you make some sort of sound? Throw something at me, throw a rock. Not at me, but by me. Is 
Please don't hit me with a rock. We're in the middle of nowhere. There's no electrical here whatsoever. Nothing but field. There's a house over there that doesn't have any electrical in the house. And ever, go ahead. And ever since we got back to the car after Nathan's shirt got tugged, this thing's been going off. The K2's yes. been going off. And say there's some over there. That's probably it. Probably well, I don't it. think they're going to set off the K2. If that was you, can you make it light up again? Let us know you're still here. You can come back and light it up. It's okay. Two it just went off again after being yeah. off that all that time. To the person in question who pulled on Nathan's here your collar, do you mean us harm? Yes? No? Do you not like it that we're here? If you don't like that we're here, light it up. Light it all the way up to red again. Would you like us to leave? If so, light it back up the same way you just did. All the way to red and hold it. So you're upset that we're here, but you don't want us to leave. If you want us to stay here and talk with you, since you're always here by yourself, with no other human activity, can you light that up, please? All the way to red. And we'll stay and talk to you. You just did it. Can you physically show yourself to us? Or if you don't want us to see you, you can come up to my left hand and say something. I've got a recorder in my hand. Or so touch you, one of us. If you say anything or make any noise, we'll be able to hear it. If you can touch one of us again, that'd be awesome. like being touched. Larry's volunteering. Did you die here? Is that why you're still here? If you did die, Whoa, you yeah. Again. again. It's still, and it's going again. Okay, so you died here. Were you murdered by men from Missouri? That was a strong one. Is it on camera? Yeah. It's recording. So men from Missouri murdered you. That's what you said. Correct? Red, please, for yes. Now go up and try to grab that out of her hand. K2 fluctuations are a good way to gauge paranormal activity, especially in rural areas. A K2 meter is able to detect electromagnetic fields within a given radius. These electromagnetic fields are then digitized to an LED light readout system on the device. The greater the number of lights that show up on the K2 meter, the greater the milligal reading of the location. It is believed that paranormal activity is related to electrical activity, so if you are able to detect a reading above your location's base reading, especially when there are no electrical emitting devices around, it could be the possibility of a paranormal occurrence. Some researchers believe that spirits are able to draw energy from different sources and their surroundings to try and interact with the living causing the fluctuations in the K2 meter to be visualized. Well, you know, you're a big part of history. It's called the Meredizine Massacre. And after you died, there was a big war. The Civil War. People fought for your rights to abolish slavery. Such a horrible, horrible act in human history. So just to let you know, you won. Slavery was abolished, thankfully. Does that make you happy? 
Are you still here with us? Does it upset you that the man responsible for the massacring of your troops here, not your troops, of your your people here, got away with it? And was never prosecuted? Maybe he didn't know that. Obviously he didn't because he was dead. <laughs> just like the minute that you said what you did, it just stopped. Well, we appreciate you answering our questions. If you... that or you gave oh, it and it's shit. going red. The Spooks team was able to capture some very interesting evidence from their investigation at the Meridazine Massacre site. All of the evidence that was captured was through digital audio recorders. The handheld camera's audio devices were not able to capture the following EVPs. The first EVP that was captured sounds like the voice of someone who is not present while Larry is investigating near the swing in the park. <laughs> The second EVP that the Spooks team was able to capture sounds like a gun being fired in the distance while Larry is still investigating near the swing in the park. We have to remember that we are in the middle of the country and it is possible that this was the sound of someone actually firing a gun on their property. So we are not able to definitively say that this is a paranormal occurrence, but it does coincide with some of the reports from the location. The hair on my hands is standing up. What the f was that? hair on my hands is standing up. What the f was that? The hair on my hands is standing up. What the f was that? These two pieces of audio evidence, along with the personal experiences and the K2 fluctuations that the team was able to witness, shows that there is something possibly going on at the Meridazine Massacre site. Continued investigation and evidence will one day prove whether or not this activity is truly paranormal in nature. With all the tragic and disturbing history that this location holds, it's no wonder that some memories have stayed behind for future generations to bear the burden of.